Hey folks, in this tutorial I'll show you how to create this animated tentacle sort of effect. This is created by duplicating a whole bunch of splines and then some instances on the top. And you get some quite cool growing style effects by animating some of these parameters. That was quite a fun little setup. And it's not too hard to put together. So let's make a start on the tutorial. Let's start with a cube. Add a new geometry nodes network. Delete that first node and we want to start with a grid. That's going to function as the ground. Put that on a size of 6 and the number of vertices doesn't really matter in this case. So I want to scatter some points, distribute points on faces. Put that on Poisson disk and just lower that to about 0.8. So the next thing is to scatter some curves onto that. So instance on the points we've just created and add in a curve primitive curve line. Put that into the instance. See we're already getting our scattered lines and put that on Two, just to make it a little bit higher. And it's not obvious at all, but each of these primitive lines actually only has two points. So I want to increase the resolution of that. So resample curve. And might just put that on 50. Next thing you want to do there is turn all of those instances into something that is manipulatable. So put that on realize instances. Otherwise when we change the positions it will move the whole of that spline. Whereas we want to move the actual points themselves. So set position And I'm going to run some noise through this. I'll just actually just group that. Control J with them all selected. And then put in the noise texture. And so if you put that into the offset, you can see it does what you think it would. It's pushing each of these points through that noise in 3D space. Actually, you want that on 4D just so it can animate that W. So if you put in the scene time, frame into the W, it'll be too fast by default. Just going to put a math node, multiply that by 0.02, hit play. You can see we're getting some wriggling splines there. It's a good starting point. Put a scale on 1, and that's more what I was after. So you can see the problem there is that the whole spline is moving whereas I want the base to be solid and get more movement as it goes up towards the tip. It's going to increase the frame range there to 10,000 
And the other thing you generally want to do with the noise, especially when it comes out of the color, is to change that range so it goes into the negative. So put in factor math and subtract 0.5. That way you get a, a better general movement because it's going to go in all directions. Okay, so to get that working, you want to use the spline parameter. So that's a node up here, spline parameter. And that factor is essentially an index from zero to one along the length. So zero is the root and one is the tip. So I'm just going to duplicate that vector math node, put it on scale. And the scale is going to increase the amount of noise. So I want it to increase as it goes up the length of that spline. So we're using that factor, Put the factor into the scale. See straight away, it's done pretty much exactly what I was after. Just to get a bit more control there, I will map that range. Map range. So I'm going to do a control H just to hide everything else. And as mentioned, factor gives you zero to one. And the more you increase this, the greater the noise as it goes up the length. But you can see it still keeps that root planted on the ground there. So I think two is looking pretty good. And if you did want some more variation, because that is a field, you could put random into that. So if you had one to two, and some of them will move more than others. So I'm just gonna keep that where that was. And next thing I want to do there is put something on the top of that spline. I'm going to select all of them, control J. And what I want to do is use this node endpoint selection. There's quite a useful node when you're using curves because what it's going to do is give you a boolean out of here for the selection of either the start or the end point. In this case, just want the end. So if you use an instance on points and that selection into the selection just a matter of creating a UV sphere. Put that into the instance. Put that down to 0.1 in size. And it's a little bit hard to see what's going on there because I need to merge back the original curves. So join geometry and join in the original curves. And you see they're sticking quite nicely to the end. In the case of a sphere, we don't have to worry about the orientation. 
can do that, but for now, we'll just keep it simple. And you can see they are faceted. So set shade smooth. And I might randomize the scale of them as well. And make that say 0.5 to 2. Put that into the scale. And you're getting a little bit more variety there. So the last thing you want to do with those splines themselves is mesh that. So I'm just going to take everything to do with the instances, select Control J, just to put them into a frame. And then curve, curve to mesh. And of course we need a profile. Curve circle, put that on 0.1, resolution of six. And you can see what you're getting there. So I'm going to use exactly the same idea that I used here with the spline parameter to make it so that the end is narrower in that radius. So you notice the radius there is the normal shape socket, so I can't put anything into there. That's why you need to use the set radius, set curve radius, and you can see it's got the diamond socket, which means it's a field. So we can put an expression into that. Same thing, spline parameter, factor into the radius. And it's actually the wrong way around. That's quite simple, it's just a matter of mapping that range. Just going to control H. Map that range. And as mentioned, factor is already 0 to 1. So we just need to flip that around so 0 to 1 becomes 1 to 0. Now in this case, it's getting a little bit too narrow there, so I might put that on 0 0.2. And I'm just going to grab all of that meshing, Control J that. Of course you can label these. Just keeps everything nice and neat. Lastly, I'm just going to put some materials on this and have a way of basically adjusting the scale of these so they taper out from the center. So material, set material. And just so I've got somewhere to adjust the materials, I'm going to call that one eyeball. I'm going to make that red. Add another material. Call that stalk. And it's going to make that very dark gray. Now I can select the eyeball, shift D, and the stalks. Just going to hide everything in the scene. Put on the AO, three and three, and screen space reflections. So that's what you're getting. And then the finishing touch 
is to adjust the scale all the way back at the start of the graph. So you're just going to adjust the scale here based on the distance from the center of the world out. So you're going to take position and get the distance via the vector math. So distance to the center of the world, zero, zero, zero. Put that into the scale. Now you can see it's gone the opposite way around. So same thing as I did earlier, just want to flip that around with the map range. So the distance there is probably about 0 to 2. And flip that 1 to 0. And you can see what's happened there. So this is adjusting the outer ones. And that's the height of the inner ones. So you can actually get some quite cool growth style effects out of this. Especially when you then move this, this is essentially acting as a fall off. So I'm not going to animate that now. I'll put that on two, maybe about 0.3 and that's going to adjust the size of the fall off. So probably about 3 looks good and maybe make that a little bit more dense. So that's the final result. We can take this a lot of different directions. So have a play with that. And thanks for watching.